here's how we do the drop down list. Um, print some text, select the name. That's what we see here. Uh, select the name. And we print a, um, a couple line breaks. And then we read some lines from the user. Uses that text file. We read that text file and we assign it the variable names. And then this is the uh, um, this is the tag that's used to start one of these drop-down boxes. It's a select tag. You can give it a name if you want. Uh, and we're going to run through a uh, for each loop. We're going to go go through each of the lines in that names variable, and we're going to print each of those names. We're going to rejoin it with this tag option. This is how you put an item in. Uh, a drop-down box. So select is the tag for uh, a drop-down box and option is a tag for each of the items in a drop-down box. So we're printing to the screen that uh, the HTML for the drop-down box, then we're printing to the screen each of those things. We're putting in that drop-down box each of those names that were in that text file. So that text file can contain anything here. It's just going to go through it. could have 5,000 names in it and those could all appear in this drop-down box. So for each name in that list, print an option, print the tag, and then print the actual name. And then when we're done with that, print the closing option, we print the closing select, and a couple line breaks. So what's happened is we've got a select, here are all the options, and it closes it up and then it moves on. So the next thing is, uh, you say select a date and time, and it says today's date is this date, um, current date. And then again, we have another drop-down box. Uh, select, and then for each, we use the variable M. This is how we refer to all the months. Rebel stores those those words in system local months that have January, February, March, and all the other months. Um, so for each M in that list, we're going to print the option tag and then that M, the month. So it goes through all the months, and it prints those into a drop-down list, which looks like this all the months into that, into that drop-down list. And then we print the closing option tag and the closing select, so we don't get a, any weirdness happening in, in HTML. Now we're going to do the same thing with uh, dates. And for this, we're going to uh, cycle through um, all the numbers, in 1 through 31, stepping by 1. So we're going to go from 1 to 31, uh, use the variable days and month to store that temporary number, and so we print 1 through 31 as options into a drop-down list. That's a huge drop-down list here. Otherwise, we'd have to write this in text. Uh, we have to have option 1, then another tag, option 2, option 3, and so on all the way to 31. This just does it quickly and easily, and we could change the numbers if we wanted to. Uh, we could make that go just, for example, from days 1 to uh, 1 to 30, and if we wanted to have the even numbers, we would just step by or 2 to 30, we could step by 2. An easy way to do the even numbers in one. Uh, and we have the same thing for time. So we have a huge number of times here. We're going to step from 1030 to 1230 using a for loop, uh, stepping in 30 minute increments. So you can see when you when you look at this option, uh, instead of options, it goes in half hour increments. And we do that for the times 10 a.m. to 1230 p.m. And then we do that for the times 1 and we put all those things in, uh, as option, options in the select. And when all those numbers have been uh, printed to HTML, uh, we close up that, those options in that select drop-down list. We do a couple, nor a couple more line breaks. You'll notice these items here didn't have line breaks on them, so they appeared next to each other in the HTML. Here's a line break. So after that, uh, we have the uh, submit button. And we close the form. So again, that's a complicated one. Um, and we start with uh, the standard CGI header. Start printing some HTML. Decode the any data that's been sent to it. If something has been sent, it's not empty. Uh, then we print the uh, submitted name, and we print the submitted uh, time and date. That's what happens when we submit. The selected name and it prints the selected uh, date and time. Um, 
but if nothing nothing is submitted, if we just go to that page, it's not going to do that. It's going to do this. It's going to print the form. It goes through, and when that form button is pressed, the submit button, it's going to go back to this page and do something with it. And again, we loop through these and create uh, dynamic lists. And again, this is really important for creating dynamic web pages. You want people to be able to select from uh, lists of information. Um, we read the users.txt file put it in a select and we use a for each loop to go through that and print each of those into the select as an, as an option. So a quick review, uh, basically on every web page you need uh, a form and, every, and, it, and as part of any CGI program you need a form to get information from the user and you need to point the action of that form to your to a CGI script that's going to do something with that uh, information that's submitted. Um, and the first three lines of that uh, CGI should be uh, the same as you've seen in each of these examples. Uh, we need to use this bit of code that we saw uh, to decode any information that's been sent. Uh, you can assign that to a variable. And then you need, uh, in order for the user to see some results, you need to print out HTML4 formatted content. You need to print each of those HTML items to the screen, to the user's browser. Um, and you can include that HTML form uh, right inside the printed uh, CGI output so that you don't have to have a separate HTML file. Uh, to learn a little bit more about uh, HTML, you can go to Google and type in HTML tutorial or HTML forms tutorial might, might be more appropriate. Uh, these two links uh, describe Reb Rebel CGI programming, how to install Rebel on the web server, what things to look out for, how to set the, uh, if you're working in Linux, uh, you're going to need to set the uh, chmod, the, the um, uh, application so that it's executable, so it can run. Um, you're going to need to do that also for any CGI uh, text files that you create in CGI programs. Um, and this, this, these two little tutorials explain how uh, how to do those things in greater depth. Uh, this CGI B BBS tutorial is actually a definition or a description of how um, Carl Sassenrath's uh, the designer of Rebels uh, little BBS application works. And there's an example in uh, the cookbook that describes CGI in more detail. And one final thing here. Uh, there is another option for creating dynamic web pages like this, web pages that work with data and interact with the user. Um, and it's to use a, um, a uh, server that can deal with Reb co Rebel code uh, natively. This application is such a program. It's a web server program that you can run, for example, on your home computer if you want to run your website on your home computer or if you have a business system or if you have a, a server that, that you have available to run your website. Uh, you can run this program and use it instead of, for example, Apache. Um, and uh, it knows what to do with rebel code. And if you put rebel code inside these little pointy brackets, uh, sort of as a tag uh, with this little question mark, it uh, open and closing tags, uh, it will evaluate that rebel code as if uh, it was in a CGI. So you don't need a separate uh, HTML page. You can just put your rebel code right inside uh, your HTML. Uh, that's a format uh, popular um, because of the PHP programming language makes creating uh, uh, web pages, uh, dynamic web pages, really easy. And you can do that if you use this uh, this program to serve your pages. If you use that application, there's actually a, a newer application called Cheyenne. Uh, it's a little more robust, a little faster, a little newer. Uh, it does a similar type of thing. It allows you to embed Rebel code right in your web page. All you do then is just put that on your server, and if you're using that Cheyenne as your web server, it will interpret the code um, that you put in your pages. That's another really nice way uh, to be able to create dynamic pages. And in that case, you don't need to use CGI at all. You just put your pages on the site, and they appear with any information and calculations that, that have uh, been included inside these brackets.